Paul gets to memorize this and write it 15 times. Welcome to the coolest, dippest half hour of fun on TV. This is Brain Stew with Jennifer Pulley. Meteorologist Jennifer Pulley here for Brain Stew. Uh, well, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just really a teacher, but anyway, I'm going to pretend. This week's forecast for the show includes showers of interesting equipment to predict the weather. There will be a frigid experiment pushing in from the north. High winds are necessary in order to launch a weather balloon. The outlook for the rest of the show is seasonable. A downpour of facts, scattered library books, and hey, if you want to find out what's next, you better stick around. Brain Stew is next. Time for a pop quiz, kids. Can you guess where we are? I'll give you a hint. It's three football fields long. Oh! <laughs> Holds 5,500 people. and a hundred planes. Can you guess where I am? Well, I'm on the USS Enterprise, a US Naval aircraft carrier based out of Norfolk Naval Station in Norfolk, Virginia. This ship is humongous. It's a floating city. It has everything from a dentist office to five restaurants to its own weather station, which is the real reason why we're here. We're feeding your brain with weather on this episode of Brain Stew. What is the definition of weather? Well, I'm glad you asked. Weather is hour by hour variations in atmosphere conditions experienced at a given place. That means the weather's always changing from country to country, state to state, even from city to city. It's always changing. It's always different. I was wondering, how do you measure the weather? Well, that's a really good question. Let's jet over to Nauticus in Norfolk, Virginia to find the answer to that question. Land ho! Hey down there, I'm here at Nauticus, the National Maritime Center in Norfolk, Virginia. And besides having cool experiments on the Navy, the Chesapeake Bay, sea life and conservation, they have some really cool instruments here that can tell us about what's going on outside, the weather. It has gotten sunny, so I'm going to put on my shades here. And I'm going to talk to my friend Pam. Pam, how are you doing? All right, how are you doing? I'm great, I'm great. I'm excited that you have invited us here to Nauticus. And I hear that you have some neat instruments. Oh, we do. That can show us how to measure the weather. What you got? Well, over here we have a high-growth thermograph. What? It's a high-growth yeah. thermograph. High-growth thermograph. Say that 10 times quick. <laughs> This measures humidity in the air, which is moisture with the human hair. And as the hair absorbs moisture, it gets longer, and it moves the needle up and down on the graph paper. Cool. So you can see how much moisture is in the air. You know what? Just because I like you. There you go. There's some right. of my human hair. <laughs> we'll use that when one breaks. Thank you. <laughs> now, I was told that um, we were going to be inside the whole time. Uh, Why are we outside? <laughs> That's where the weather is. Oh, yeah, you're exactly right. I guess the, these machines wouldn't work inside, would they? They wouldn't. All right, what have we got here? This is a maximum minimum thermometer. Oh, that's easy to say. OK. And the maximum thermometer is just like any mercury-filled thermometer. Just like the ones we use in school? Right. OK. It floats when it gets warmer and sinks when it gets colder. OK. And the minimum thermometer has alcohol in it. And as it gets colder, the alcohol, there's a float that floats on top of the alcohol. Uh -huh. And it sinks down in the alcohol as it gets colder, and it stays there. So you can, you can determine how cold it got. So I could come here like in the dead of winter and it's going to register the, the temperature outside as it is the maximum and the minimum temperature. Right. Cool. All right, next. <laughs> well, up there, Whoa. we have our wind speed and direction indicator. Wind speed and direction indicator, mm -hmm. okay. And so the one here on the left is sensing, obviously, the wind. That's why it's moving. It spins the faster the wind goes and it activates a little generator yeah. that sends a signal down to a readout that we have inside, and it'll tell you how fast the wind's blowing. What's this one doing? That's direction, just like a regular weather vane that you would find on top of a barn or whatever. Oh, it just yeah. tells you which way the wind is blowing. 
And then this looks like something you should put corn in or something. I don't <laughs> it know. It does look like a <laughs> silo. It looks like a silo. This is a tipping bucket. Inside of there is a small bucket that holds one one hundredth of an inch of rainwater. And every time it tips, it sends a signal to a, a gauge that we have inside. It'll tell you how many times it tipped, so that's how many hundredths of an inch of rain we had. Great. Well, can we go inside and see how these things work inside the measurements that are actually taken? Sure. All right, this sounds great. Let's go. I'll tell you what, I'm glad to get in. The weather's great and all, but it was hot out there. It's hot. I'll tell you, man. All right, now, tell me what's going on here. We just saw all those cool instruments outside, and these are the readouts. Right. Okay. Exactly. Can you explain what each one of these does? Sure. Okay, we were talking about our tipping bucket outside, mm -hmm. and this is the indicator. This is the rain gauge, and it gives you a readout. This is... Uh, annual readout of 1.17 uh -huh. inches of rain so far, and of course today hasn't rained, so current rainfall, so it's zero. And right. you guys are keeping track of this uh -huh. all the time, and it's right every day. Here. That's right. Great. Oh, what's this? These are our, our indicators for wind speed and direction, and this is wind speed, and you can see it's well, it's moving a little bit, slightly, a little. And, and I guess it's moving in a southerly, southerly direction. direction. <laughs> you know, you ought to be a meteorologist. <laughs> yeah, I know that. And this is a... This is our barometer, and it measures atmospheric pressure. Okay, now Pam, where are you going to take me next? Oh, we're going to look at our satellite theater. Oh, great. It's so like a movie? Yeah. All right, can you give me a little idea of what it's about? Don't tell too much, though. <laughs> it talks about how weather on the whole planet has affected the planet and what's it going to do in the future according to what it's done in the past. If you want to see it, you need to come here to watch it. And I want to thank Pam for sure. taking me through all these things. Do you have any popcorn? Nah. You know, that's all right. right. <laughs> that's all right. I'll pass on the popcorn. All right. But thank you so much for You're letting welcome. us come and learn about weather. Great. Let's go. All right. I wish I had that popcorn. <laughs> Those are some pretty cool instruments that Pam showed us. Well, up next, what we're going to do is we're going to put those instruments to the test. We're going back onto the carrier, not on a tugboat like I'm on now. We're going back onto the carrier into the ship's weather station, and we're going to find out how they put those instruments to the test. Don't go away. I just came up all these stairs. You wouldn't believe it. Anyway, I'm here with my friend Justin. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Jennifer. How are hey, you doing? Hey, great. I'm, I'm doing really well. Now, where did you guys take me? I came up all these steps, and where am I? Of course, you had a long trip to get up here. Yes. Right now, we are on the third floor, which is called the O3 level of the USS Enterprise. All right, we are in the weather office, the weather office on board the USS Enterprise CVN 65. And this, this is kind of small. It is small. It is small. Oh, Most yeah. of our equipment is cramped in here. Why is it important to have a weather station on an aircraft carrier? Well, as the name implies, an aircraft carrier holds aircraft. Those aircraft fly on and off of this aircraft carrier out at sea. Now, you got to figure, normal airstrips on, uh, in an airport on, for civilians are very long pieces of runway. Sure. Well, when you're out in the middle of the ocean and you've got an aircraft carrier that is only 2,000 feet long, that's a very small landing strip. So anything that the pilots can get to help them land, to know exactly what they're going to see when they get to the aircraft carrier, as far as weather goes, can help them. So that makes our job very important for the pilots. What kind of weather equipment do you use here in your weather station? There is a multitude of equipment that we use. We use barometers, we use computers, we use just about anything you'll see at any other civilian airport. I think we're going to end up going around looking at some of the equipment. Great. We have to climb more stairs? We may later. Okay. Great. Hey, Justin, this thing looks a little familiar. I think I've seen one of these before. That's a barometer, Jennifer. I okay. think you have. Okay. Tell me about it. This piece of equipment is very old. It's been used for close to 150 years now. The barometer has been used to measure air pressure. <laughs> air pressure is the weight of the atmosphere. Now, why is that important? Well. Just the weight itself is not important, but it ties into other factors that have to deal with the weather. When you hear of low pressure systems or high pressure systems that affect weather, they all have to do with the pressure of the atmosphere. 
Now the barometer itself measures and measures the weight of the atmosphere, and we use that to indicate changes that are occurring in the atmosphere. Those changes give us an idea of what's ahead for us uh, down the line in the next few days. Like we see the barometric pressure is rising when the barometric pressure is That's falling. exactly right. Exactly. You know, Justin, that barometer looked pretty ancient. Is it kind of old? It's old. Okay. It's very old. Now, don't tell me you have all old things on the ship, right? Of course New not. things? Of course we do. It's a pretty cool picture of the East Coast. That where, certainly is. Where are you getting it from? Well, this picture comes from a satellite receiver that we have here on board the Enterprise. It's up on the O10, or the 10th floor of the ship. You can't well, take me there, right? More Stairmaster. Good. <laughs> okay, what we're, what we're looking at is, like you said, a picture of the East Coast. We use all of our satellite pictures that we get on board here for predicting what's going to happen in the atmosphere, again, affecting our local weather. When we're out to sea and moving around, crossing across the Atlantic, well, we can still receive these satellite pictures, so we, we can stay self-sufficient anywhere we go in the world. Here we have a plot of a hurricane track. Yeah. We get those very regularly. Hurricane season generally goes from June 1st through November 1st. Hurricanes, typhoons, willy willies. Huh? They're all other names for uh, tropical systems. Okay. And they're very important to mariners around the world. We have to monitor those constantly. Sure. Make sure that we know what's going on. Speaking of hurricanes, what happens if a hurricane approaches Norfolk, Virginia? Uh, it's not exactly fun. When a ship is next to the pier and you get real high seas and real high winds, what will happen is the ship will move back and forth. You can't really have that multi-million dollar, billion dollar ship banging up against the pier. You're going to get a lot of damage. So uh, we have to evacuate. It's called a sortie, and often when a hurricane is coming directly towards our, our base, yep. we have to leave. We have to go out into the ocean and do what's called a hurricane evacuation or hurricane evasion. The ship goes out and waits for the hurricane to subside or That's to... right. Not much you can do about a hurricane. Justin, you're just giving me the grand tour here. I certainly am. Where are we going next? Now, here we are on the bridge. It's called a bridge. This is the bridge. Okay, this... what does this have to do with the weather? Well, this is where the ship is actually, it's steered from. Yeah. The captain lives up here. Well, he doesn't live up here. Well, sometimes he, he lives up here. It feels like he lives here. I bet it does. This is where the ship is steered from. This is where all the, the planning and all of the work that everyone does on the ship comes into play. You got to figure, this ship is always on the move. Sure. So we have to know what's going on. The CO needs to know. The captain needs to know exactly what's going on. This is where he sits over here to oh, the left. Oh, let's take a look at that. That's great. This From seat. this chair, this is where he makes all the decisions on where the ship's going. Now the weather comes into play because, well, you can see, we have planes landing and taking off all the time. Well, the ship has to go in a certain direction for aircraft to take off and land, depending upon the wind. Sure. And they also want to steer in and out of bad weather. This is just like my chalkboard at school. I know it's not, but what is this? <laughs> Here you can see exactly how important the weather conditions are for the rest of the ship. Mm -hmm. As I said before, the captain works up here and he gets a view of what's going on. Well, you can see they have the environmentals, the air temperature, the sea state, the water temperature, the visibility, true wind, all of that is important and essential criteria for the people steering the ship and for the captain himself to make decisions on where to go and exactly what to do. So you're pretty much the guy or one of the guys that gets all this information our, together for the our captain. Our office maintains a constant update on this. Justin, we've come outside. I'm so excited to be outside. What are, what are we looking at? Where are we? Here we are on the O11 or the 11th floor of the ship. It's also known as Vulture's Row. It's got kind of a funny name, but you can look out here and you can see exactly the flight deck. There cool. you are. This is where the aircraft land and take off. So this is where a lot of people like to come out and take a look at what's going on on the deck. And um, this contraption here. This is part of our equipment right here. To, this, to predict the weather? Yes. To look at the weather? Yes, you're Great. absolutely right. This is called a sealometer. What? A sealometer. Spell that. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> okay. You can? The, the, the way the sealometer works okay. is it uh, shoots out a laser beam, which goes straight up into the sky. When it reflects off of a cloud, when the laser comes back down, it gets read into the other side and it gives us the height of the clouds above the ship. We can relay that information to pilots or whoever else needs to know exactly what the cloud heights are. Pilots like to know what the clouds are so that when they're flying in towards the aircraft carrier, they know when they're gonna come into the clear so that they can make it make visual sight with the carrier. Justin, I wanna thank you for the tour and all the stairs. You're more than welcome. Okay, okay. and giving me the lowdown on the weather and why aircraft carriers need a weather station. It was my pleasure, it was our office's pleasure. Thank Hopefully you'll be able to come back again. Okay, you're shipping me off. 
uh -huh. to another person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, who, who am I going to next? Now we're going to go talk to uh, Dave Sonier. He works in the office with me and he does the same job, but he's going to show you some of the other elements of our office. Cool, see you later. All right. Hi, Dave, how are you doing? Fine, Jennifer, how are you doing today? I'm great. Well, where are we now? This ship is so big, I get lost. Well, right now we're on what's called the, the fan tail of the ship. We're one level up, and this is normally the area where we launch our weather balloon, or what's technically known as our Ray, Ray, Ray Wan sign. Okay, and I guess that's what you're holding. Right, this is, <laughs> this is what most people refer to as a weather balloon. Okay, it's big, what does it do? Okay, well, it's, it's got a, a helium-filled balloon okay. with enough helium to pull up this box. The box has got a, a sensor, a temperature and a dew point sensor on it, and an antenna that transmits the signal back down to our receiving station. Here in the sh on the ship. Right, here on the ship. Great. And we'll take all that data in. It also lets us know what type of wind direction and wind speed the uh, atmosphere has at different levels. And no normally this balloon will get up well above 40,000 feet. And it never comes back then? No, once, it, uh, once we let it go, we'll never get it back. It'll either pop eventually, or it'll just uh, it'll come down by itself and land somewhere in the ocean. And but you track it by the means of this box. Right, then. this this antenna. That's so cool. Yeah, this antenna right here will transmit the signal. It's got a little bitty water activated battery that uh -huh. we've put inside. Uh -huh. We soak it in a glass of water for about five minutes and it activates the battery. We just stick it in there, connect it up, and uh, it'll it'll keep sending us a signal. That's cool. Now, will this balloon help you to predict if bad weather is coming so you, the ship can prepare for bad weather? Uh huh. Data that we receive, we can input into one of our computers and uh, the, the data will be analyzed and um, we can use it to figure out how unstable the atmosphere is, if there's any type of turbulence for air traffic around us and yeah. we'll also uh, we can use it to guess uh, levels of uh, icing that aircraft could encounter in the area. Wow. So it, we can get a lot of data off of it. This is great, this is great. Well, huh? I want to thank all the guys at the weather station on the USS Enterprise. Thanks a no lot. Problem. Come back. I will, I will. That's a wrap. Connections or what? I'm here at WTKR News Channel 3. I'm in the Storm Center with my friend Jeff Rucker. How are you? Hi, Jennifer. Well, listen, I have a question for you. You always have Jeff Rucker and then it says Me meteorologist. What is a meteorologist? That uh, is a question everybody asks. A meteorology is the study of weather. Okay. And so what we do is we use lots of information. We have some education. We go to college to learn meteorology, learn about the study of the weather, how the atmosphere changes, how air moves from one place to another. We put it all together and we learn how to make a forecast. That's what a meteorologist does. So you had to go to school to become a meteorologist. That's right. See, it's important. It's cool. I keep telling you that. What equipment do you use to observe the weather? Well, you know how satellites take pictures and we know where the clouds are. Well, the satellite is something that is a piece of equipment, very, very expensive. It's flying up in the air around the Earth's surface. And right now? The, right now. Okay. And the satellite that we use, most all of the United States uses, is called GOES. It's a geostationary satellite, cool. and it's taken pictures of half of the Earth's surface, the half of the Earth's surface where we live. We get a picture about every 15 minutes. And that picture, of course, is exactly what's going on. It shows us where the clouds are. We see the clouds as white. Just because there's a cloud, we know it doesn't mean it's raining. Okay. So we have radar to tell it's where it's raining now. And if we know where it's raining now, and we know what the wind is, then we can try to forecast where that rain is going to go from one place to another. The nice thing about radar now is that we can say it's raining in this area, and we can also see how much it's raining. What does the H and L on a weather map mean? That's a great question. Good. Everybody asks that question. H's don't mean hot. Okay. They mean high pressure. Okay. We talked about air pressure earlier, yeah. measuring air pressure with a barometer. Yep. Well, what's really important with pressure is how it changes. So we have areas of high pressure where the air is pressing down. Okay. And right. we have areas of low pressure 
where there's less air and actually there's more upward motion around the low pressure. So anytime we see an H across, pretty much we can be guaranteed it's going to be sunny? H's normally mean good weather. Okay. Then you sometimes can have clouds with H's, but normally you don't have storms. Okay. Why is lightning so dangerous? Well, lightning is electrical current, and we all know that you don't mess around with electricity. Lightning is kind of like when you it's a cold day and you rub your feet on the carpet, you go over to the door handle, and you get, get a shock. shock exactly. Except yeah. magnify that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of times. That's how much energy is coming from the cloud down to the ground. Wow. Jeff, thank you so much for sharing all this information with us. Our brain is filled with all this stuff about weather. And my brain's doing too. Good, 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 good. good. I like this guy, this is good. How does temperature affect air pressure? Let's find out. This is what you'll need. A balloon, an empty glass soft drink bottle. No, I said glass. Thank you. No, salt and pepper. Step one, place the open glass bottle in the freezer for at least an hour. Three, put the balloon over the mouth of the bottle. Step four, allow the bottle to st sit at room temperature for 15 minutes. And now the results. As you can see, the balloon partially inflates. Why? I'll tell you. The air, I'll tell you. The air inside this bottle contracts when cooled. This allows more air to enter the bottle. As you take the bottle out of the freezer, the air inside begins to heat. The balloon seals the bottle. The air inside the bottle expands and moves into the balloon, causing it to inflate. The air in the atmosphere contracts and expands as it is cooled and heated, as did the air in the bottle. Expanding warm air rises and decreases atmospheric pressure. The pressure increases as the air cools and descends. Temperature is just one factor that affects atmospheric pressure. A rise in pressure is a good indication that nice weather can be expected. Just picking flowers out here on the weather deck. Hey, that's the one thing about News Channel 3. They have an outside weather deck. You get to observe all the weather. I do want to thank Martha, Ann, and Margaret for their time on the Multimedia Minute. Remember, you can find those books or books similar at your own library. Just pick up the phone and call your librarian. They're there to help. Well, that's it for this weather episode of Brain Stew. Next week, who knows where we'll be? All I know is that I probably could do this meteorology business. There's a low front and a high front. Uh, you know, I'm not going to quit my teaching job. Definitely not. Remember, the weather's always changing, and so is Brain Stew. You don't know where we'll be, so join us next Saturday. When a hurricane is coming towards Norfolk Naval Air Station, or Norfolk, no, Naval, Naval Base, where am I? A rise in pressure can be. He is so scared, he doesn't like that.